Hello students, today I'm going to introduce you the toolbox called MNE. This will be one of the main toolboxes we will be using for implementing our midterm or final project. The MNE is a tool that can be used for EEG analysis, MEG analysis, or even for electrocardiogram, all types of time series data that can be recorded from the brain, as well as other physiological signals. So first thing you need to do is just type the website address, mne.tool, and go to this website and read the information about the installation. Okay, MNE is a Python-based tool. So you need to have Python distribution installed, pre-installed. So you can read some relevant information here. So if you go to install MNE Python, well, depending on your operating system, there are different ways to install. Okay, if you have Linux, okay, this is a YML file that contains all the dependencies and libraries that you may need to install, for example, here. Or Mac OS, similar, and Windows. So after the installation, browse through the documentation and learn more about these tools. And it comes with a lot of tutorials, very useful. And the analysis of EEG, MEG, and other types of the data. Okay, so continuous data pre-processing and segmentation using segmenting the continuous data, estimating ERP, time response analysis, many examples ready to use. And it can also be used for designing real-time VCI system. MNE has real-time module where you can acquire data in real time and decode or analyze it in real time. So if you don't want to install the Python on your PC, there is another option which you can use online. Cloud computing platform. One of them is Colab, Google Colab. Colabresearch.google.com. So what is Colab? So Colab is collaboratory which allows you to write and execute Python in your browser. You don't need any uh, configuration and you have free access to GPU and you can also share the Jupyter notebooks. All right, just explore. You can analyze, visualize, perform signal processing here on Colab. And also you can link your Colab to your own Google Drive. For example, now let me open one of the notebooks related to m &E. You can navigate to your Google Drive folder where the Jupyter Notebook is located that you want to open in Google Colab. Let me close this. Open with Colab. Once you open the notebook in Google Colab, it will appear as follows. And you may want to first connect to the runtime. Connect in Colab. Let me see. So yeah, we have some settings here. So Python runtime type. GPU or TPU that Google provides for free. You can also use RAM, okay, and then save. So I'm connecting to the Google uh, engine. So once you're connected, you can install MNE using as simple as typing pip install MNE. Okay, yeah, so it will take just a few seconds. And the size of MNE is not that big. Second, I said that I have some files on my drive, so I want to open it. So second step is to connect your Google Colab Jupyter to your Google Drive. So that you just type this, go here, then okay. Right, so I have now connected, mounted my Google Drive call app. So now I want to first import MNE. This is import MNE, and I will use some matplotlib plot function. Okay. Second, I want to load this file. This is the RP file, and I want to show you today how to load continuous data, segment, and then perform some simple visualization. Next step is to access my Google Drive. 
Okay, let me just try to do this here. So you need to find the Google Drive, My Drive, and navigate to the folder where your data is located. Okay, so Jupyter Notebooks. All right, so copy path. Now I need to navigate to that directory. Okay, CD to that directory. Let me check. Okay, how can I? Okay, so now we can see what I have in my current directory. So these are the files. So I want to load this file. This is ERP, and I call it as F name. We have already imported MNE and then some other useful functions that MNE has is the reading different types of uh, files. Different files with different file extensions uh, recorded by different EEG MEG device. So MNE, MNE EIO module contains input output functions that allows you to load data so this is the name of the files that i want to load from this directory so let's try to load it raw mm -hmm. so you see we have the raw data loaded <coughs> so a mini is object oriented python based toolbox or tool or library therefore every object in python has their corresponding methods right so to access what you can do with this object you just can do a few things. So first, row and then tap. Row, row. Okay. It shows different methods coupled with the object or encapsulated. So row is now continuous EEG data. What we can do add channels, events, remove, append, crop, copy, drop channels. We can also use filter, perform some plant pass filtering. And many other things. Plot, another widely used function. Save. So I highly recommend you to explore those functions just to learn. Another function that I like is just calling dir, which shows you what kind of methods this object has. Okay, those are private methods related to the object public ones and then if you want to find out what crop does to the object row dot crop as question okay so row dot crop question provides you some brief information this help file it looks like it crops the data I limit the data from row file to go between specific times Okay, the t min is assumed to be zero for all subsequent calls. So you can find um, the helper for information regarding every every object. So row filter is another very widely used function because the first step in EEG analysis is filtering, right? Bandpass filtering, high pass filtering, low pass filtering, those kind of uh, operations. Also, take a look at resampling, yeah, drop channels, some bad channels. Just to explore yourself. Let's try to do simple filtering. So we can define the bandpass filter as follows. So low frequency cut and then high frequency cut between, let's say, 1 to 20 hertz. All right. So yeah, we run into the problem. Some error. Why? Because when we load the data, we need to, uh, the MNE by default doesn't load it into memory. It just links to the, to the file in the directory, right? So we need to define the option called preload true. Let's try again. Okay, now we load the data again with the following set. So preload, load the data. And if you do filtering, after that, you can see it works. So we are filtering or bandpass filtering the, the continuous data set we just loaded. Now let's try to plot how it looks like. 
So if you plot this continuous state set, we'll have the following visualization, uh, which shows the location channels and then time series, or EEG channels, right? FP1, FP2, F up to CP6. So those are the subset of channels. Okay, so and then these are time points. It's just one uh, window, time point window, which we are visualizing. EEG and MEG data is buried in noise. So we can see different type of noise in the data. One of the common examples is shown here, these big amplitude waves. Look, this, this, this. Uh, those are called as uh, eye movement artifacts. Okay, that's related to uh, eye blink, basically, eye blink artifacts. When you blink your eye, your brain data is affected, or the EEG sensors picks up those uh, artifacts as well. And also, we can, if you visually analyze, we can find some heartbeat-related activities as well. But here, we don't see them. It, they will look like uh, stuff like this, heartbeat-related. So um, after loading your data, one of the first steps is to pre-process, clean those kind of artifacts. The ME provides different ready-to-use uh, modules for cleaning the data. One of the algorithms uh, for cleaning this kind of eye blink for EOG artifacts is called ICA. ICA stands for Independent Component Analysis. Okay, so ME preprocessing module has different type of preprocessing method which you can use. Well, without the diving or into the theoretical formulation of ICA, let's just demonstrate see in practice, I mean, how it works, how it can clean the data. The first is we instantiate the ICA object from the ME library. Okay, and there are some hyperparameters that you need to set, such as number of components that you want to decompose the EG signal. All right, and then once we have this ICA, we can use, if you're familiar with scikit-learn, I mean, it comes with uh, helper functions or functions which allows us to fit and also sometimes predict. So we pass a raw copy of our data to IC object and define a bandpass filter between 8 and 35 hertz. Let's see. So the bandpass filter between 8 to 35 using FIR filter, and we can see some details here uh, regarding the filter, zero, a one plus zero phase non-causal bandpass filter, and for ICA. Okay, so we have in total 63 EEG channels. Let's see, yeah, so once this process is done, we have, we can plot ICA. ICA components, independent component analysis. So these are the ICA components that decompose the signal into different components. So the task after performing this ICA is remove the components that look like noise. Here we need some domain knowledge, but usually you want to find some, some kind of activities which is close to eye, eye location, and looks like a, like a normal, anomaly or abnormal activity, non easy like so let's tr select these components, okay, identified by the index, try to remove. Well, theoretical formulation of uh, ICA will be covered later in our lectures, but I just want to show you here uh, some examples. So ICA, next, uh, these are ICA objects that, that contains a decomposed data. We say ICA exclude the following, okay, and then we also can try to find the bad bad um, indexes based on some threshold. If the amplitude of okay, raw signal, I mean raw data, is higher than the reference channel by two standard deviation, then identify it as a bad I index. We use this channel as EOG channel. Now, this is what we have, raw plot then apply ICA and then plot. So if you compare before and after applying ICA, this is original raw signal data, and this one is after ICA. You can see that 
those iBlink related components are gone. So we cleaned them. Okay, those are uh, cleaning iBlink related activities is one of the first step when you perform EEG analysis. Okay, before segmentation. But we leave the raw or continuous state as it is. Well, here we're demonstrating on the copy, so we didn't touch it. Now let's think about uh, epoching, so segmenting this continuous data into epochs. So usually for epoching the continuous data, we need event markers. And then event markers can be found in, in the raw object. So ME has the find events method. Okay, ME find events that will find the annotations on the loaded object using um, steam steam in steam channel. Let's see. Okay. Find events in the raw object we have loaded. And it says us there are 903 events in total with the following event IDs, event identification. So 100 could correspond to target, 200 to non-target event. And if you just uh, open this event, it's a NumPy array. A NumPy array which has event markers, the time points where a certain event happened. So 200. The first event happened around 3,241. And we can also find a hundred a second event, second class event. We can is, is visualize those events, the first uh, hundred events, you see. So here we have time axis of EEG, samples, and the location of time markers or events. 100, 200. Those are event IDs. So now can you guess which one could be related to target ERP and non-target ERP? I said that the data loaded is ERP, right? Event related potential. So as I as we can expect, the target ERP will have less number of trials as compared to non-target with a ratio of 80 to 20 percent. So this is standard stimuli. Debian stimuli. And we use those time markers to segment our raw data into epochs. Okay, so we need to do some 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 steps. So MNE epoch object, which we'll be using for segmenting, require events array and a dictionary. Of the intended condition names and then correspond trigger numbers. So we need to pass a row, continuous data, event array, numpy array that contains, and event ID. We can give name to event ID as standard stimulus, target stimulus. Let's try. So we just segmented continuous ER, uh, continuous EG data using a many epochs and the segmented trials. Okay. Now we can visualize, try to plot those segmented data. Okay, here we go. Channel information, and we have event IDs, 200, 200, 200, and then 100. Non-target, target, non-target, target. And this dash line separates two epochs. So epoch here is the time segment, or one trial, one observation of EEG. Yes. First trial, second, third, fourth. So continuous um, the data that has been segmented from continuous okay we can observe here some of the noise patterns we have discussed before look this looks like an eye blink artifact in the data so let's try to apply ICA on this epoch or segmented data by excluding those components we defined earlier so if you do this all right then we can apply ICA. Basically, first before epoch, applying epoch, so we need to make sure that preload is true. Okay, um, yes, and then you can apply ICA. Then let's 
try to apply some uh, baseline thing and then try to explore the epoch object like this so this is a python object we have different methods functions that we can use for example to access uh, target erp related data we say epochs target or epoch if you just type box and see what happens so it says that we have target and then standard so to get the target related data we have the following comment we can access it or so observe how tax like what and non-target a uh, standard 797 so we can use this information after the backslash to, to can to get all the data from those conditions how does the epoch erp look like epoch activity look like after segmentation we can pick one channel by the channel number id channel 13 is our cz channel in this epoch well let's see epochs first epochs in for contains useful information about uh, this object including the channel names 63 channel in total so channel 13 1 2 3 4 up 13 here is identify cz first channel fp1 and we have some other information regarding the operations that have been done on this data so for example we applied a bandpass filter with the following cut of frequency 1 and 20 hertz and also uh, the, the object contains the date when the data has been acquired and what kind of sampling frequency has been used in acquiring this data so 100 let's try to visualize one of the channels cz1 from target erp epochs target cz here we can see target erp onset of stimuli is usually located at zero minus 0 0.2 means uh, 200 millisecond 100 millisecond okay we said that target or erp appears around 300 millisecond after the stimuli this is how you can see it very clearly positive deflection of the eeg waveform well here we can see some color coded information where they represent the color I mean amplitude values we can try to visualize other channel for for instance fc fc5 channel 8 right let's see 8 fc1 mm. oh, okay then channel 7 will give us fc fc5 so frontal central electrode located on the right hemisphere it's 5 right also show some some uh, erp activity target erp So to ensure as we have as many oddball and standard trials we can run to equalize those unbalanced data look from 80 to 20 ratio we can try to okay select only balance equalize event counts it does that for us we can do many other things using the mne tool uh, on our data first let me show you that what you have what what you can do after pre-processing is of course saving it in the local directory so mne allows you to also save it using it is function called epochs.save or mne.save or any mne object has a save method that allows you to save up to two gigabyte of file size so we need to find file name okay uh, those are one of the parameters and usually the many uh, community adopted this file extension convention which ends with dot fif okay fif this is called because it's convention dot e fif you can also use python pickle uh, to to save the data dump to data let's try so i, I just said epoch save my my save my epoch using the following 
Nay, so let me check if had if it has been saved in my yes, this is how it has been changed. So if I try epa yeah, so epa that fifth also a convention, okay? So you need to provide name here. Two. Okay. I just changed two and then it's here. So it is connected to my Google Drive. I'm saving it to my Google Drive. Okay, now what else do we have here? Yeah, um, another thing that I want to show you here is that the, we can define the duration of each epoch. Okay, so for example, t mean um, to be from minus 500 and plus 1500 milliseconds after the stimuli. Before stimuli, after the stimuli, right? So total length of two seconds. So in our previous segmentation, we use just default t min t max, which is provided in epoch. Okay, so you can also define wider uh, window lengths. Okay, which is sometimes useful or required when you perform some time frequency analysis. If I do this, let me try and then compare these plot. This is the, the result of the segmented data with a longer time window. You can apply ICA, equalize, and then same, safe. Let me do it here, but in the next lesson lecture, I will show you how to perform time frequency analysis, which is one of the important steps in the analyzing, in the analysis of the brain data, brain signal, time series data, such as EEG, MEG. I can double check. Okay, small, okay, here, this is what I have. Just to conclude this first demo, so MNE has a lot of methods, okay, that is ready, readily available. Or analyzing your EEG data, MEG data. But under the hood, the MNE uses most most of the time uses SciPy NumPy libraries. Okay? But of course, not always. Therefore, if you want to extract the data and take it outside the MNE, you can do it. And if you want to use NumPy or NumPy based matrix operations or using some uh, Fourier transform from SciPy module of the Python. So epochs, how, how can we get the data out? Epochs, then, no, get, okay, get data. This method allows you to get the data out. Let's see, x. Let's call it x and try to get numpy array. Numpy array. Let's try to take the dimension out. Yeah, x or type x. NumPy and the array, okay? What what we have here? We have 63 channel plus there is one stimulus channel which we had to drop. And this corresponds to time points, time points. Wait, no, this corresponds to, yes, yes, this is time point, this is number of trials, number of observations in this given data. And then epochs, target get shape right so if you want to extract only target relate ERP you have to make you have to make sure that you are selecting the target and getting the data okay so it is half of 220 so once you take the X outside the MNE you can perform your favorite numpy or scipy based operations so it's very, very convenient using MNE and plug it back to MNE object later. If you want to do some operation outside the MNE or if you cannot find the, the method of MNE that you want to work with, highly recommend you explore to learn more about MNE.